Catalonia, Spain, October 2017. This is what voting looked like. These are civilians being attacked by the national police. The police beat them, fired rubber bullets, broke into polling stations, seized ballot boxes, and shoved protesters away. More than 800 people were injured. They were voting on whether the Catalonia region should become independent from Spain. More than 2 million voters out of an eligible 5 million cast their ballots, with an overwhelming majority voting for succession. But Spain's government called the vote illegal and unconstitutional. And nearly two years later, Catalonia is still part of Spain. We have an exclusive interview with the man behind that vote, Carlos Puigdemont. Puigdemont, the former president of Catalonia's regional parliament, says he has put his life on the line for the separatist movement. To his enemies, he is a traitor. To his allies, he is pushing the country and the region forward, while forcing Spain to deal with its past. This is Business Insider Today. The violent scenes during Catalonia's referendum shocked many people around the world, but they were no surprise to Carlos Puigdemont. That is in the traditional attitude or traditional response from the Spanish power against pro-independence movements. Spain has 17 autonomous regions, and Catalonia is one of them. In many ways, it defines itself through its culture and language, Catalan. It's nestled in the country's northeast corner, with Barcelona as its regional capital, and it's Spain's most prosperous region. Catalonia has been fighting for independence for centuries, and separatists claim they're backed by this history. From the Middle Age to today, Catalonia has act, and for several centuries was recognized as an independent state and a clear nation with a culture, uh, language, laws, institutions, constitutions, the same that is uh, accepted for the independent nations and recognized nations. As president of Catalonia's regional government, Puigdemont led the independence referendum, but he is now in self-imposed exile in Belgium and hundreds of miles from home. But I wake up every day thinking it's my last day in exile. But from the personal point of view, it's not easy to live without your family, why If I return in Spain, I will be put in jail. But they miss their papa. What is a nation and why does this matter and is it worth it? Well, nation uh, is not something sacred. Mm. It's not something created by God. It's something made by the, the human being, the man. Mm. So it could be changed. We want to build a future for ourselves. And we want to do that with the, the, the tools of democracy, asking the people and respecting the results. Less than half of Catalonia's eligible voters participated in the referendum. Of those who voted, 90% favored succession. The half of the Catalan society who are not in favor of independence, they didn't participate. They participated only the ones who wanted. And that's why they got 90% in favor. Giuseppe Borrell is Spain's foreign minister. This vote was done on an illegal procedure. The Spanish Constitution Court said that it was against Constitution, that they should not do that. Nevertheless, they did. Like Puigdemont, Borrell was born and raised in Catalonia. But unlike Puigdemont, he's a vocal critic of the referendum. In 2017, he led a march against it. And the Spanish Constitutional Court had said very clearly, you can ask about splitting the country apart. You can fight for it, but you have to do it in the framework of the law. This kind of questions has to be put on the framework of a constitutional change. In the 1930s, Catalonia was a self-governing region until General Francisco Franco rose to power in 1939. Franco was a fascist dictator who enforced nationalism and homogeneous Spain. Under his reign, Barcelona was bombed, the Catalan language was banned, Catalonia's president was executed, and an estimated 100,000 people were left unaccounted for. Puigdemont, says his grandfather, was one of them. Since Franco's death in 1975, the Catalan language has been freely spoken and celebrated, and Spain has been a democracy. Catalonia has been mostly governed by self-rule and was described as a nation in the preamble of a law. 
But in 2010, Spain's constitutional court ruled the region was not a nation, but Catalan is a nationality. And that has created, well, uh, a very shock in the, in the mind of the Catalan society, who has realized after near 48 in democracy, it was not possible to be a Catalans, a full Catalans, within the Spanish state. So, a significant part of Catalans has proclaimed independence. After the 2017 vote, Puigdemont declared Catalonia independent from Spain. Spain's then prime minister immediately dissolved Catalonia's government and jailed some separatist leaders. Others went into self-imposed exile. I received every day the death threats, some of them very explicit. We discover two uh, electronic devices on the, of our cars. Puigdemont says Franco's reign has ended, but his legacy continues. This government-run national monument is where Franco is interred. Franco's graves is a public monument. It's part of the public heritage. You can pay nine euros and you can pay a homage to the Franco's grave, which is beside the grave of the founder of the fascist party in Spain. More than 30,000 people from the Spanish Civil War rest at the Valley of the Fallen, but only two graves are marked those of the dictator and his ally. After Franco's death, Spain transitioned from a dictatorship to a democracy through a pact of forgetting and a law ignoring war crimes and preventing their prosecution. For Spain, from the beginning, was make a program like in Germany. The denazification was a disfranchisation of the Spanish society. We will not be at that point. In 2007, the Spanish government started addressing this past by condemning the Franco regime and recognizing his victims. When Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez took office in 2018, he vowed to move Franco's remains from the Valley of the Fallen. It's scheduled for June. We believe that this place has to be sacred in the memory of all the people who suffer and died during this civil war. And he has to be removed from there. And this is the way of reconciliation. Reconciliation means that we know what happened, we understand, and we make our vows in order that this never happens again. Franco's relocation is polarizing Spaniards, and Vox, a far-right party that celebrates Franco's ideals, is growing. Around the world, as nationalism surges, as hate crimes rise, and as countries vote to leave their unions, our understanding of democracy is changing. Carlos Puigdemont is hoping to share his message of democracy with a larger audience and is running for election in European Parliament. After the Franco's death, uh, I realized the best way for the province of Catalonia was to be, to be an independent state. I was a young man, I was a teenager. I decided to live as a democrat. If that means to fighting, I will fight. I, I will decide to fight for democracy. But Catalonia's prolonged fight has left supporters questioning if independence is the answer. Me and um, I think a lot of people is looking for, for example, a, a feminist republic as an example of what we want Catalonia to become. So if it's only independence, um, I don't know. Catalonia is, is governed by somebody like Donald Trump. Well, I don't like that. <laughs> Pongan un referéndum legal y que la gente vote. Y en esa votación saldrá que los catalanes no quieren la independencia. Spain attempted to forget its past in its rush to become a democracy. Now that past is resurfacing and playing a critical role in deciding the country's future. I'm a Catalan. I look always at uh, the Spanish state uh, as a state in, who has acting against my identity mm -hmm. because the Spanish state has banned the Catalan language, has persecuted our leaders, our families, and has uh, banned our institutions, our universities. Mm -hmm. The only possibility to continue to be a Catalan mm -hmm. is to have our uh, own institutions and our sovereignty. For Business Insider Today, I'm Nicholas Carlson.